One of the tools I always suggest for a beginner to get um, is one of these basic utility knives. You can get at any hardware store. They're very useful. They can be used as regular cutting, but they can also be used as a trim knife. And that's generally how I usually use one. And the blades are replaceable, obviously. it's You don't have to sharpen it. Uh, but I wanted to make myself something nicer than that. So I've been working in the shop, and I haven't been filming it, unfortunately. Uh, and I've managed to stick together some steel into a Damascus billet and rough out the shape and get this uh, pretty much heat treated and ready to go. It's a functional uh, blade. I just need to blade blank, I should say. I just need to do the finished grinding and get it all polished up and put a handle on it. And so that's what I'm planning on working on today is finishing up a fancy new trim knife for myself that'll kind of go along with my fancy round knife that I made uh, almost a couple years ago. Now they've got that etched and prettied up. You can see the pattern. Time to go ahead and put some scales on it so I can get it all finished up and ready to use. Now I'm using a five minute epoxy. I've got some other stuff that's supposed to be stronger and work better, hold better over time, but it takes longer to cure. And it turns out I'm not patient enough to wait for something that takes longer to cure. Because I keep going back to using 5-minute epoxy rather than using the better stuff. Just because I want to get the project done today. I don't want to wait.
Okay, I've got the handle shaped. There's some mistakes on shaping it. There's a couple places I ground too deep into it, not paying attention to what I was doing. General inexperience and out of practice. But it turned out feeling nice, and I've got it all uh, sanded up smooth and ready to go, and put some oil on it here. So it'll be done pretty soon. This is a piece of curly maple that's got um, the usual curly maple grain on it, but then it's been dyed and stabilized. So it has a little bit more color to it than curly maple would, but it still has that um, effect where when you change the position of the blade and the light, or the position of the handle and light, you'll get a different appearance in the lines and the the wood. Put it on once that's oiled up. Let it dry a little bit. And then I can work on finishing up the blade. I'm going to put a maker's mark on it and then uh, sharpen it up. Now I did a video a while back ago about this. but uh, Basically I'm just etching in my maker's mark on this which is just a hexagon B that I use for it. Uh, I don't put it on everything but I like to put it on the knives that I make. Most everything I use for this is regular stuff that's available either locally or a lot of people just have around their house. The only thing that's unusual is this vinyl stencil because I do have a vinyl cutter. Uh, but you could cut technically just a piece of electrician's tape and put it on there and cut out the design you want out of the um, electrician's tape which is and instead of using the fancy transfer tape that's made specifically for this job I'm just using some masking tape the rest of it is all stuff that like I said people have around their house um, this is just salt water exactly what it sounds like table salt thrown in some water and a q-tip and the electro etcher it's just a power supply from, I think this was a modem instead of a router. It's 12 volt power supply. I'm going to plug that in. And I put these um, clips on the ends of the wires. And on the positive end, I put a red one. Negative, I put the black one. The positive end goes on the blade. The negative end, you clip on the Q-tip, right down where it's wet with the salt water. And that will etch away steel on the blade. It actually sizzles just a little bit when you're using it. turns metal into black gunk, which is what etching is all about. So once we got it etched on there, then we just peel away our vinyl. It didn't etch very deep on this one, just enough to put a little mark on it. Well now, I'm going to go ahead and take this downstairs and sharpen it up. I'll do that off camera, but I'll come back up here for the final stropping of it. And then we'll cut some stuff and see how it works. Now, I always keep a leather strop around for stropping tools while I'm working with them. Uh, just to sharpen things up just that little bit. Just to re uh, refine the edge, polish them just a bit. Because I feel that the more polished that edge is, the better it cuts through whatever material you're trying to cut, particularly with leather, it'll make a difference of whether it goes through with a nice clean cut or where raspy ripping noise that it makes. Um, so stropping your tools, never a bad idea, I don't think. But anyway, if you get it stropped to where it's really bright, shiny edge, this has still got some lines on it, but it's not bad. That's when I think you get the nicest, cleanest cuts. Now this should be 
plenty sharp. It's sticky sharp. So, standard sort of test. We'll contribute to knife maker's mange on my forearm. Oh yeah. That didn't hardly even make any noise. Cut a whole bunch of hair. Nice smooth shave. Uh, another standard test of mine, the junk mail cut. So, not just the envelope, but what was inside of it. Several layers of paper. Again, can't hardly hear it cut. But of course, this is a leather knife, so I've got a piece of scrap leather. Matter of fact, this piece of scrap leather, this part down here is, well, part of the rock. It bends right there, but then not at all. So I've got some soft leather, I've got some hard leather here, and it's all about, ooh, we'll call it eight to nine ounce. some tough stuff. So while this knife is not particularly designed for that style of cutting, for like cutting your pieces out, it will work for it. Um, and even in this dry out tough piece of leather, it does pretty well. Now on the softer spot that was a belly leather, it goes through pretty easily. Then we have this hard stuff. This is a pain to cut. And this knife's going right through it. Nice clean edge. And again, like I said, that doesn't hardly bend. That feels like an old dried out piece of skirting and it's only about, well, that might be a little bit more than nine ounce, but not much. So all in all, I'd call that one a successful little knife. I think I'm gonna try something like this for the sheath on this one. Just uh, something to hold the blade and keep it, you know, protect me from it more than anything else. So there's going to be a spacer all the way around. It doesn't need to be very wide. Um, this part comes up further on purpose so that the edge, if it doesn't catch perfectly tight with this clasp I put on there, if it slips in and out a little bit, that edge won't be exposed across there. We never want that little corner to start sticking out of a knife sheath. And of course, I added on this little lump on here where I can put a small snap. Um, I'm thinking a, a wire snap or a Sigma style snap. Um, those are two different types of snaps, but uh, probably the Sigma snap is what I'm going to use. And then just added some sort of curve to this backside. It doesn't really much matter the spine of the knife as long as it stays in the sheath how much of it's covered. So that should bring that up and still leave the maker's mark and everything exposed. And there won't be a lot of shaping to this sheath because it's all just on the blade. It doesn't go up over the handle. So I'm going to cut one piece out like this, another piece that's reversed minus this little flap, and then a spacer piece to go around.
Now normally on a knife sheath like this, I would line the piece so that if I put a snap on the inside of it like this, it would not rub against the knife. But I'm planning on using Sigma snaps and they're coated on with plastic on the back side. So I'm not that worried about it. Plus they're pretty smooth on the back. So since I'm using that style of snap, and since this leather is already a little bit thicker than I would usually want for this small of a sheath, um, or at least it's as thick as I would want it to be once it's lined, I'm just going to go ahead and leave the liner off of this one and just make this a quick and easy sheath. I don't really have any room for tooling on this one, so I'm just going to go ahead and stamp a border around it. And I'm just going to use a camouflage tool for that. Just something to add a little bit to it. Notice I don't even care enough to get my uh, marble slab back up off the floor. Put it on the bench. All right, a little bit of dye, some finish. You just gotta glue it together and stitch it, and it'll be done. Well, a few more steps than that, but I'll definitely have it done tonight. And for a finish, as usual, I'm gonna use Resoline. Um, I do thin it down. I don't use it straight, which is actually, I think, something that the company that makes it says do not do. Uh, but I thin it down with some water, and I find it applies a little bit better. Less likely to get uh, spots on the surface as it bubbles up. All right, give that a few minutes to dry, and then I'll be back to glue it all up. Okay, while the finish is still drying, I'm going to go ahead and set the snaps in this. Uh, Sigma snaps are not like any other beast out there. Uh, one side's like a, a rivet, basically. And then it's got this uh, small, flat stud that goes on top of that. And you got a setter that'll fit... Oh, there it is. Over that stud. And it sets just like a rip. And it kind of pops into your setter. That's what I meant by it being smooth on the back. Uh, we'll go ahead and take it on one of the flatter spots of the anvil here. And flatten it out even a little bit more. But yeah, it sort of pops into your setter. And it sets real flush with the leather. The other side, you've got this little, it's split into four parts, and it'll spread out inside of a cap. These pieces. And they functionally uh, work about the same way. So we're gonna put those through. Now instead of like most snaps, you've got a whole bunch of space on the inside of the piece where it's going to snap on the other one, these the two pieces of leather are going to fit together really flat and flush. That's one of the advantages of this type of snap. It's not necessarily an advantage for a knife sheath like this, but for belts and things like that, it's great. Uh, the other setter, of course, is a little peg on it that goes inside that and keeps the shape of it from mashing too much. If you got a good set of setters that match the snaps you've got, it should set real nice and easy like that. And they do snap really hard the first few times. So I would suggest popping it together and apart a couple times just to make sure you're going to be able to take it apart later once you got it all done. Now when you're gluing pieces together, you can actually take something and rough them up. You can use sandpaper. You can just do like this and use a sharp knife. You just gotta be careful not to cut too much into it. But you can see I'm shaking. Now you might want to go ahead and finish these top edges before you put this together. 
I don't think it's going to matter too much on this project, so I'm not doing it right now. I'm just going to go ahead and glue it together. Um, but on most knife sheaths, that's usually the case, is that you want to go ahead and finish those up before you get it all put together. They're just easier to get to then. Um, this time, I think, since I don't have anything in the way, I don't have any belt loops or anything like that, It'll be easy enough to get to after I've got it together. Now is also a really good time to double check and make sure your knife's going to fit. You can adjust your fit a little bit right here. Like this case, I actually have it spread a little wide. So I'm actually going to adjust it down just a touch. And I'll just, when I go to trim the edges and grind them off, I'll just grind that off even but then I've got a nicer fit for my knife. Again, just make sure it all fits. This has a little bit more for the glue to set and then it'll be ready to stitch together. All right, now that it's all stitched up and I uh, sanded the edges to match. I'm going to go ahead and bevel off the rough corner, rough edges, and burnish it with some gum tragacanth. And we should be pretty much done. Okay, and now one more time to make sure it fits, just like it's supposed to. Snaps in, and if you pull on it, it doesn't come out enough that you can see any of the blade. So, gonna call that finished.